Good morning, Sosa Mundamara. Good morning, Sinana. Evening, ladies and gentlemen, dogs, cats, whatever, whoever's parked, you know, the cat or the dog will watch the TV. It's debatable whether or not they know what it is they're looking at, but I have a cat and the cat will look at the screen. Sometimes it doesn't seem to be. What's funny is that sometimes there are, look at me, I'm talking as if we've been live the whole time. Uh, I, sometimes you have the cats uh, on the TV. And I've watched the cat to see if he's different when the cat is on, when we have a projector screen, so it's huge. And he'll look it's at huge it. huge pussy. <laughs> but nothing changes. He don't seem to recognize when there's a cat on the screen. He don't know any different than if there's a bus or a person. He just looks at it mindlessly. How you doing, Darko? Nice to see you. You look better. You got over the duck flu? I'm 90% over the duck flu. I did watch last week's Crypto Degenerates with yourself and Satoshi Sean. It was an awesome show. I was really, really, really excited to see it. And yeah, big shout out to Satoshi Sean for covering me because I was sick as fuck as a duck. Well, so, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun having Sean. Um, you know, he uh, uh, likes to wander off the path of cryptocurrency, but we discussed that before. I said, it's okay if we do that a little bit. You know, you're a guest host, and, and we, me and Darko do that anyway. Um, but it, we had a great time talking. He, he, it's interesting. Funny they mentioned All right. So we ended the show uh, discussing briefly the show, uh, the TV show, The Mandalorian, right? And that's the Star Wars new show with the, the Boba Fett-looking guy. And... Mm. This week I read an article, it was an interview with uh, uh, Werner, Werner Herzog. I actually remembered somebody's name, how about that? Uh, Werner good. Herzog. Now, Werner Herzog plays in The Mandalorian a character, like a, sort of a, a supplemental character, uh, one of the bad guys. And then he gets killed, I think. I think he gets killed. Um, but he's also been a long time. Uh, he's a German filmmaker, uh, won a bunch of awards. I, I don't know what his films are, but I guess he had some popular ones or whatever. So the guy is, is pretty well known. They were discussing um, uh, Elon Musk and like colonizing Mars or whatever. And he said, he went on record as saying the very idea was an obscenity. He considered it an obscenity, and he said humankind should not be like, we shouldn't be like locusts and just be jumping from planet. And see, I'm reading this. What do you think about that? What do you think about, what do you think about the idea of, of a city on Mars or, or something? I have given it some, some thought, but before I get into that, I need to ask you how you're doing. And after you tell me how you're doing, I need to turn off my AC, which I forgot left on, to make sure there's no audio interference in this stream. I hear so it right Rob, now. How the f I, I can I do it right? Let me do it right now. Yeah, dude. I hear, I hear it. Uh, so any, anyway, people, uh, I'll talk to you while Darko's uh, fixing that problem. Um, yeah, so he, he considers the idea of humankind. He said we, we should work on uh, fixing this planet and making this planet pristine and then keeping it that way rather than looking to colonize other planets. He said he would like to bring a film crew to Mars, but then he would leave. Um, and he finds the idea of colonizing there obscene. Uh, Doc, oh, yeah, wow. Uh, noise is gone. Oh, so there was noise, was there? Mm -hmm. God damn it! Well, the noise is gone. It, Rob, sa it, sounded, it, sounded, it, sounded like, it sounded like a toilet that never stopped flushing. Yeah, that'll be right. That'll be right. Dude, after the week I had been sick, the toilet did not stop flushing, believe you me. Uh, uh, Rob, how in the fuck are you doing, bro? It's well, been a couple I'm, of weeks. Uh, I'm doing... A, uh, uh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> uh, you know, okay. Well, as well as can be expected. Um, how about that? How's that for an answer? Very good. So Very what do you think? Good. Life on Mars? It's, it's, we going to go live there? Oh, we will. They're sending a ship in the next 
five years, I believe, with a crew. It's a one-way mission. So the people who are going are already in their training, not just physical training, but their psychological training as well. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, once they go there, they ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. They're leaving all their friends and family behind. On, on, on one hand, it sounds like a great idea if you want to leave all the bullshit on earth. But on the other hand, could you imagine never having another barbecue again or Burger King again? Drugs, oh. alcohol? Burger King, Again? Burger King, I can live without, but uh, yeah, I get your drift. Um, you know, what's interesting is there is a similarity, and and maybe it wasn't as final, but for many it was, uh, to the old, uh, you know, when somebody would, would, would hop on a ship and cross the ocean and go to the new world. I mean, most of those people never went back, and there was no sense of them. And before travel was really set up, it wasn't like, oh, I'll just hop on a ship and visit. Uh, I mean, this was like a 40-day journey or whatever the hell it was. And, and these people yeah, were the, leaving. But the possibility of return was realistic. This time, it's not. Yeah, there's yeah. Zero. Yeah. They, they, they said zero that there's really be no way for them to get, even if somebody was kicking and screaming, they, they're not coming back. There's They're clear on that, yeah. And, and the other concerns with that idea is what if one of them has a blocked artery and requires the only medical attention is open heart surgery? They can't get it. So no, you no. got you're missing out on important medical shit, surgery operation if required. You're missing out on drugs and alcohol, which is fucked. And you're eventually going to be fucking your own crewmates because there's going to be limited numbers. It's only going to be what five or ten of them going up, so yeah. they're all going to be banging the same chick with their dirty cocks. Well, there's it, no real. Uh, and and now uh, on the other side, and again, being a pioneer involves a certain mindset, um, and it has to be people that are comfortable with with leaving those types of things behind. And and they're a player. Listen, the Heaven's Gate cult, right? Those people, Doe, Doe, and uh, and Doe and friends, all those guys. Um, writing the comment now as we speak they cut their fucking balls off man i mean you know that was part of their gig so that's what they did if you can find people who don't need any of that shit you just mentioned would you or i necessarily want to be a pioneer going to mars well it's not important to me to do something like that so no i'd rather be in the tail end with the the, the fat tourists that arrive after all the hard work has been done um, but the people doing the hard work are going to be of a different stripe. Now, if somebody's comfortable with all that, that's certainly their choice. I mean, I, 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 you know, you see people wanting to forbid them from doing it. I mean, come on. And if one of them goes stir crazy and fucking loses his mind, he can only kill 10 people. I mean, you, you can't really, you know, the damage is limited by a crazy person. It's not like they can go on a spree and kill hundreds of people. They're on Mars, and there's only nine other people. So they can kill the nine other people, and then they can kill themselves. That's it. That's a limited, you know, and all the equipment is still there, and you just got to send a new batch. Well, given all the advantages and disadvantages involved, if you think about what type of person it would take to consider making this move, while missing out on all these important and non-important things, it's the same kind of concept when you think what kind of person does it take to become a brain surgeon. And as we know, it's the people who have psychotic tendencies, psychopathic tendencies, are the ones most likely to become brain surgeons because they take pride in cutting people's insides up. Yep. So what kind of person would it take to make these kinds of sacrifices and leave everything behind to go to another planet? In my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion, I would say it would be someone with the mindset of a nihilist. Hmm. What do you think? Nihilists, sociopaths, um, but also you might find suitable candidates on, <coughs> on the uh, autism spectrum. You know, here are people that already have difficulty relating to their fellow human beings, and many of them with advanced intelligence skills in, in particular in mathematical areas and what have you. They might be somebody that's perfectly suited uh, for a mission like that. Well, Mars is technically colder than Earth, and autistic people do have a higher tolerance to colder weather than non-autistic people. Mm. So you could be onto something there. Hey, uh, you know, I'm sure, uh, again, uh, Elon Musk uh, projected that they'd be turning people away, and, and they plan on having a, you know, they're going to be working these people out. So the very fact that 
you don't have, you know, that you actually have to turn people away because you have too many people signing up tells me you're going to have no problem filling those 10 slots. Uh, now, you, you want a certain type of person, you want capable, competent people, so you're going to need to evaluate. If you only got 10 people you can send, you want to send the right 10. Of all your applicants, you want the best. I guess that's the best way to put it. Bro, imagine the cabin fever on Mars. Imagine, especially when you're standing outside your little base or even looking through the window of your base to the night sky and you see the brightest star in the night sky is planet Earth, mm. where everyone you know is, where everything you knew belongs. Mm. And you're looking at this little white dot in the dark sky, knowing that's how far away you are from everyone and everything and knowing that you can never, ever go back. Mm. That cabin fever would fuck with your head, man. Well, I'll tell you what would fuck with your head. Uh, if you, if you when you ask one of your colony mates when the garden is going to be ready, and they look at you and they say two weeks, two weeks, two, two long weeks, two, two weeks, two weeks, and they pull their face off over their head, that's gonna fuck with you, okay? <coughs> oh fuck yeah. You'll be missing out on future computer games and everything. It's just fucked. Uh, listen, just, I, 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 I would not want to do it. I'm not saying that I would. And I certainly would not want to be a pioneer in that situation. However, the part of the article that caught, caught my attention was Werner Herzog suggesting that it was obscene for humankind to want to do this. Now, I really disagree with that. Um, you know, Same. no. And, and the idea of uh, for what? And, and he talks about leaving shit for whom? We haven't met anybody else. OK. And if there were now, if somebody could provide evidence of extraterrestrial life, life outside of Earth that didn't live in a Petri dish, I'm not interested in single celled organisms. OK, I want something that walks and talks and has a fucking opinion. And if you can show me that, then I will entertain the idea that we need to be, uh, I don't know, conservationalist about our surroundings. However, until that time, and, and as long as we're proceeding on the assumption that we're the only life like this in the immediate vicinity, right, anywhere that we can travel to, let's fucking have at it. Go the whole hog. Those planets are ours. And we'll take every single one of them if necessary, chew them up, and spit them out if that's what it takes for mankind to continue to exist. And why somebody like Mr. Herzog doesn't agree with that or believe in that, here's a person who, who, who had spent a life in the humanities. How could he not place a value on the human condition above and beyond an amoeba in a Petri dish? I, I don't get it. So if it was a two-way trip and you can come back, I'd think it's a great idea. But unless you're going to be the first person in history to go to another planet and find a walking, talking alien that can fart and you make the news headlines finding the farting alien, I don't see it's worth it. I'd, I'd, I'd hire a farting alien in two minutes flat. I'd fire our engineer and I would offer the $5 to the fucking alien <laughs> in, a, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. <laughs> I'll engineer but the show. I'll engineer the ship myself. If I'm, you know, that's fine. But if, if we had a farting <laughs> alien every week, I mean, holy shit. Now that's breaking news right there. Should, I, should we do some news? I mean, we're here, right? We might. <laughs> we might as well, since we're chewing up some time. So, first up. First up. <laughs> I have an article from Coin Telegraph stating with a headline: "No debate that Bitcoin will increase 20x," says Gold Industry Insider. Now, oh, look, I, I, I have it up same... in front of me. Isn't that great? We can discuss oh, really? it together. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So yeah. I don't think this Gold Industry Insider is an insider from the Apollo Foundation's Gold Industry in Africa. I think it's a different insider. Oh. But. This dude called Dan Tapiero told Anthony Pompliano, all these names, that $15 trillion in institutional capital could flow into Bitcoin, pushing prices as high as $500,000. Oh, I know a lot of people that would be real happy about that. Yes. Yeah, so Gold Bullion International co-founder Dan Tapiero believes that it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin price surges to the six figure threshold let's break past the twenty thousand all-time high first and then we'll talk about half a million dollars later 
Speaking to Anthony Pompliano on the Pomp Podcast, Tapiero asserted that in terms of price appreciation, Bitcoin is the king, even though he believes investors should own both gold and Bitcoin. And he says, and I quote, in the next five years, I can see gold at $4,000. So that's double. But if gold is at $4,000, Bitcoin is probably somewhere between $300,000 and $500,000. So that's at 20 to 30x. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, I don't see that he discusses uh, the relation to inflation. Not. Not. Come on, bro. It's a coin telegraph article. No. Uh, can't expect too much here. Yeah, no, I don't. Mm. Or, or, or in the interview. I mean, that, that would be my first question to him. How does he view that? You know, you're making this statement. How are you relating to that, to the inflation of other world currencies? Because if they're related, that's not too phenomenal. It's because he's pulling these figures out of his ass. Oh, he bought yeah. a bag. He bought a bag of Bitcoin. He wants that shit hyped up. And he's pulling figures out of his ass, just like some of these other crypto YouTubers saying Bitcoin 50,000, Bitcoin 100,000, Bitcoin 200,000. What do you do? Uh, I, you read it and weep. I mean, you know what? I, there's plenty of people. I, I've seen articles like this before. We'll see them again. There's certainly, um, you know, plenty of reasons why people will say something like this. And, and attention is one of them, as you notice, you know, gets attention. However, uh, it doesn't seem like the right questions are being asked when these things come up. I want to see somebody at some point say, you know, well, what the fuck? How do you view that? You know, the gold in relation to what? It, it, uh, with today's currency values as a baseline. So uh, fiat stays where it is and gold is now proportionally, you know, right where it is. Or do the proportions change? Because if the proportions change, that's not as impressive. If I have a dollar in my hand that's only worth a penny, it doesn't really matter to me that my Bitcoin is worth $500,000 because it's only worth $5,000 in, in terms of today's money. Rob wants to hear what the correlation is between gold and Bitcoin coming from the mouth of a farting, walking, talking alien on Mars. Uh, coming from his ass, not his mouth. Yes. But what if the alien's ass is where the mouth is meant to be? And the math is where the ass is meant to be. You know, they don't ever really show things like that, do they? They don't show. How about this? A show. You, you people are running out of ideas in Hollywood. I know you are. I've seen the shit you're coming out with. How about an alien who's friendly, right? Nice, personable, maybe even has a good sense of humor, but whose mouth is also his ass. Now, you, there's endless plot, you know, twists and everything. I mean, shit, his first kiss on Earth. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. Oh. Hold that thought, babe. I got to fucking do something first, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to land one on you. No, you are fucking not. <laughs> oh, shit. You better wipe before you kiss me. Imagine having said alien over for dinner and the dinner table is ready and he just pulls down his pants and sits ass first on a plate on the dinner table and he's eating. Motherfucker's got to eat. What are you going to do? <laughs> if those aliens come, we have to reevaluate a number of you know, expectations that we have <laughs> when people, for example, sit down to eat. I mean, and we have to be fine with those things and say, oh, gee, well, this is just how it's going to be. I'm sorry. The rest of you have to watch this, but we have to entertain his customs and abilities. Dude, someone has to make a movie on that concept right there. The alien where its mouth is where the human ass is meant to be. Someone yeah. has to make a movie. Yeah. I think so. And if someone doesn't, we might have to make it ourselves. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I, I got a name for him. They can call him Bojack. Blowjack? Or, <laughs> Bo Bo Bojack. <laughs> or we can we can get Roland, that engineer, a programming engineer, to play the role of the alien. Yeah, Roland won't even need makeup. But um <coughs> Oh. Oh well, he's he, oh. he sits us first. He sits us first on his dinner plate anyway, so it's nothing uh, unusual to him. That's exactly natural. it. He'll be a natural at it. A natural. So, Darko, you want to hear uh, the five altcoins that are beating every major cryptocurrency this week? Oh, hit me with it. Hit me with it. Okay. At the top of the list, and I know you're going to have plenty to say about this, we have XRP. Ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum. Yeah. Making some, making some moves. 
the Kraken. Uh, and uh, next we have uh, Stellar, uh, also of the similar lineage there to XRP. So we have Stellar, Cardano's ADA, IOTA, and Dash. All of these coins are moving, and they're moving above the rate of the rest of the market, beating out everybody else. Those are your five winners. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, as you like to say, this is Coin Telegraph. What do you expect? <laughs> mm. All right. Well, looking at looking at Coin Gecko right now, I just hit a refresh button and the weekly highs here, and we have right now. Because how old is that article? When was that article written? This was written twelve hours ago. Okay, so as of right now, as of press time, we have on number one gainer for the week is Horizon, which is up 135% for the week. Huh. And that's sitting at $15.24. It's 24 hour trading volume is just above $23 million. Coming in at number two is Stella at 124% for the week at 19.2 cents with over three and a half billion dollars in 24 hour trading volume and coming in third is shitcoin which is sitting at 65 cents up 115 percent for the week uh shitcoin meaning xrp of course hmm. and their trading volume over the last 24 hours has been almost 24 billion dollars wow what's bitcoin's Volume fifty billion dollars. ETH is seventeen and a half billion dollars. So XRP's trading volume is actually exceeding ETH's trading volume right now. Yeah. <coughs> well, an exciting day for all the Ripple heads. Yeah, but there's a reason for it. Don't get too excited. There's a reason for it, and because of the reason, I do foresee a dump, not a correction, a dump. There's a difference here. So on December 12th, just quickly, because I don't want to give them too much attention. On December 12th, XRP will be doing a hard fork. They'll be giving out an airdrop. They'll be snapshotting XRP addresses on certain exchanges only. And this airdrop will be given out on a one-to-one -one ratio. The coin or the utility token is called Spark. It's, as I said, a hard fork of XRP, but it's also utilizing ETH technology at the same time. Could be a game-changing utility token. Sounds like it. I don't know. Could be a possible flipping in coin in the future. I don't know. What will the value be? People are guesstimating the value of each token will be one cent each. Uh, this is the reason why the price of XRP has been pumping. People are get, gathering XRP for this airdrop. But if you've been in the space long enough, you know that a couple of days prior to the snapshot occurring, people start to sell off because they don't give a shit about the airdrop. They just want to be in that window when the prices are pumping high and get out at that high when it's still there before everybody else does a couple days before the snapshot so i'm thinking about maybe myself maybe getting some xrp maybe for this oh. reason for five or seven days maybe oh. and make sure but make sure i sell off a week before the snapshot a week before i'm not saying i'm going to do it i'm saying i'm thinking about it yeah I don't know. Except, right. except, you know, here, here's what's going to happen, okay? On your tombstone, it will say XRP owner during his lifetime. On mine, it will say never owned XRP. And then when you get to heaven or hell, I don't even want to tell you what's going to happen. All right. You convinced me. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. See? Branded. You can sell it off a second after you buy it. And it doesn't matter. It sticks to you. And you will now be, for all, forevermore, an XRP owner. Ah, fuck that shit, man. Yeah, how do you like me, that? How do you like that? You just fact, swayed me, Rob. In fact, if I'm nice to, uh, just a little bit nice to Rowan, see, I keep him where I'm nasty to him most of the time, so that when I'm nice to them, it's like, oh. So I'm, if I'm a little bit nice to him, I bet he can have XRP owner put next to your name here on the... You know, right underneath where your name is. So you can consider, you know, what what, what should happen with the well, future. Well, I don't want to be remembered as a shit coiner. So you just, yeah, you just swayed my mind now. Oh, 
Yeah. Thanks, it, Rob. It, instead, you can you can you can look ahead and you can say, oh, Ethereum 2.0, they're confirmed for the December 1st launch. The I, I guess it's um, now confirmed that enough has paid into that uh, that release account or whatever. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah it, uh, the chain Genesis has been confirmed for December 1st, following the transfer of five hundred thousand two hundred. 524,288 ETH from 16,384 validators into the F2 deposit contract. So conditions have been met and December 1st is the date we've been given. How much did you say was deposited? 524,288 ETH. Okay. I just refreshed my screen. And as we speak, it's gone up to seven hundred and eight thousand now. Okay. It's 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 up one hundred thirty three percent of the five hundred twenty four thousand threshold of the minimum required. So the enthusiasm continues, uh, yeah, and I guess nobody definitely. wanted to leave any room for for debate or, or uh, vote counting. <laughs> uh, definitely. And yeah. as of as of seven hours ago, the total amount of ETH locked. In the deposit contract is valued at four hundred and twenty-two million dollars. Well, that's a, a vote of confidence and um, a nudge to say let's let's move on this. Let's get this. Let's get this out. Let's get this done. Now, let's it, get the boat we've been chasing sort of this cloud and shadow for a while, and a lot of people have expressed publicly frustration whether or not there's uh, validity to it, or whether or not there are reasons or anything else about the delays and. And people have been making jokes that it was vaporware. Um, so uh, here is definitively $400 million worth of people saying, A, let's have it. B, we believe that you, you have something to, to release and something of value and something worth pursuing. So now I guess we'll see. It's only a few days away. In fact, by the time we sit here next week, that should be live. Yeah. Um, I was just looking up something while you were talking, Rob. Uh, give me one second okay so i got it i just got an email from roland and he's, he's saying he he quoted this line to me and he writes life is like a kindness women make it hard for no reason life, a life, life is what life is like a penis women make it hard for no reason no reason yeah in other uh, words you can just look at a chicken go hard say there's a fucking reason i mean i don't know bro i mean have you ever been to church and all of a sudden you get that mystery boner for no reason well no it's the don't worst go. place to get it the worst place to get it i i try not to do that yeah we all try not to do that but it just happens it's that mystery boner it's like why here why now no if you go to if you don't go to church it doesn't happen <laughs> right or it can happen in the gym when you're wearing the tracksuit pants and all of a sudden you get that mystery boner I, i've got i've got a solution for that too darko <laughs> you want to know where else i stay away from <laughs> fucking gyms i can, don't go to the gym and it won't be a problem yeah true true uh, next up rob we've got an interesting topic to discuss oh yeah sure Bar we do creating volume Oh, uh, yeah, Bin sure we do. Binance yeah, Binance trading volume tops all-time highs with $37 billion in a day, okay? Now, a few days ago when Bitcoin was pumping hard, it was pumping hard, uh, Coinbase went down, okay, due to the high volume. Now, this is what's interesting, okay? Why is it, and it's not the first time it's happened, why is it that when the price starts to pump hard, exchanges go down? But when the price crashes hard, they never shut down. Uh, well, then it can't be the volume. Uh, it can't be the volume. Uh -huh. get it. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, shit. The price is pumping and our reserves are selling. We need to push this shit down in order to buy <laughs> back at the bottom or we'll have nothing left to sell. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's shut down the exchange. Never ever does it do they crash when it when the prices crash. Only when the prices move up. 
we've discussed it before, and I'm sure we'll discuss it again, uh, that the exchanges that we have, decentralized exchanges, for the most part, all of them, have adopted the worst practices and the worst inclinations of traditional finance. And traditional finance, we know it's a game that nobody's supposed to win like that. So if you see a stock and it's on a runaway tra train, you might see the stock exchange step in and shut down trading on that stock because they feel, oh, well, that shouldn't happen. And now didn't we did that like three times this year. What's that? Early this year. Earlier this year, didn't they do that three times? They it's the happened switch. a bunch of, yeah, it's happened a bunch of times, a bunch of times. Yeah. And, and, you know, so they put, they throw the circuit breaker off and now nobody can trade on the thing because it's too hot of a property. And there must be some nefarious reason why it's pumping. Okay. And yeah. so we, you now you just made a pretty coherent case that we cannot attribute despite whatever claims are made the uh, exchanges going down to volume in the in, in under those scenarios one to one yeah. when you compare and we'll even be fair we'll say let's find two incidents and compare uh you know that are of a similar selling volume except one on the upside and one on the downside did the exchange go down on the downside? Did it go down yeah. on the upside? And, and yeah. you know, if those answers are different, how can you say, oh, well, it's simply the the, the volume of uh, it requests on their servers? No, <laughs> no. They know what to do. Yeah. I think, man, there needs to be some independent audits and query, in queries or royal commissions or some sort of commissions I want every exchange investigated by these commissions. No. You don't understand. They don't want it. They don't want it less. They don't want it less of that. They want more of that. The governments of the world, the financial magnates, anybody who would do the investigating, they want actually regulations in place that will make that more common, not less common. They like the idea of trading being stopped, uh, stopped if something's going off the charts. This is how they do it in their own backyard. So why are they going to say, well, we need to come in and investigate this. This isn't fair. They think it is fair. They don't think that it's fair. If the, I don't care if that thing's pumping for a completely stupid reason. You have all these people who are playing in it. And, and, and just like everybody else on the level playing field, they're making their buys. They're making their sells. And you know what? If one of them makes out and they shouldn't have, too fucking bad. You write you, you right the train, do whatever you have to do. But don't fucking say, oh, we're just going to shut it off as the price is rising. No, let the market work. Eventually, that's people it. are going to figure out whatever it is that's causing this, you know, spike that shouldn't be. And they're going to start selling off again. That's how it's supposed to work. There will be winners. There will be losers. But the way the game is rigged now, it's to make sure the little guy is never the winner. We're never the winners. OK, not in a big way like that. Because they'll take it it's away really from frustrating. you. frustrating. Yeah. It's really frustrating. Really they frustrating. don't mind, however, when you're the loser on that. Oh, well, you I knew mean, the risks. You you were you were gambling along with everybody else. Well, I got no problem with that. But those people deserve to be uh, have access to the upside. That's because the, your loss is their gain. That's why they don't care. Of course. They're happy to buy the shit up. They're fucking you know, garbage prices. Sure. The fuck Which brings care? us back to what we say every week. Keep your fucking coins off the fucking exchanges, people. That's it. Yeah, yeah That's we'll it. say it till we're blue in the face and it don't matter. Plenty of people will, mm -hmm. will continue to do what they're doing because they know better and maybe they do. But, um, you know, we'll continue to see stories like that. And we'll continue to see essentially evidence of a rigged game. And, and if you don't think that it's rigged, well, you know, then you're not paying attention. Exactly. Uh, next up, Celsius says it tipped in 25,000 Ether to help launch Ethereum 2.0. Additional transactions have been deposited into the ETH 2.0 contract to ensure a December 1 launch of ETH 2's beacon chain. The highly anticipated launch of ETH 2 is scheduled to take place next week. Specifically speaking, ETH 2.0's proof of stake blockchain known as the beacon chain. This has been confirmed to run alongside the Ethereum network starting December 1. Although some members of the blockchain community remain skeptical about a December 1st launch date, 
for the beacon chain an impressive <laughs> 500 of course an impressive 524,000 ETH from 16,384 validators has been deposited into the ETH2 contract as such there is now assurance from ETH, the ETH foundation that ETH2's beacon chain will go live as expected but but they set an interesting number 16,384 validators let me just double check this one moment where i put it there it is all right so they're saying it's 17,000 validators but on my screen on my data i have 17,000 as a number of transactions to the ETH 2.0 deposit contract and the unique amount of the, the the number of unique depositors stands at 2025 unique depositors so we have two sets of numbers here unique depositors 2025 and the number of ETH 2.0 transactions to the deposit contract is 17,000 so what i'm understanding from these statistics is there's only 2000 people that actually made deposits which make up a combination of 16000 or 17000 transactions does that make sense yeah does that make sense? yeah so there's not 17000 people that deposited there's 2000 people that deposited making up for 17000 transactions to the deposit con to the deposit contract mm -hmm. so i think that article this article is wrong sounds like it's wrong yeah they just grabbed a number that they saw and didn't think about it yeah as they always do so yeah that's the news on that yeah, listen, you could, it's funny that they mentioned it in there because you only need to spend a little time on for example uh, crypto twitter to see the skepticism from some corners still uh you could be sure that some of those dollars are from people it's it's not a friendly give you know it's a let's let's do this it's more of a fire under your ass sort of give mm. and i i'm certain that uh, not all those dollars are coming from true believers as much as people who are saying enough okay let's push this and, and you know you, you're saying you, you need deposits here are your fucking deposits now will you meet the deadline and they're going to look and see all that money can go right back out if people lose confidence so if the launch doesn't go the way it's supposed to or you know if some other set of circumstances convinces them that that's you know that they're not serious about this um people can pull that money back and you won't see the, the network being used um it's not like there are not alternatives and a platform shift is always an opportunity for alternatives um you know anytime a, a brand does a pivot if there are other competitors who have had a hard time getting a foothold they view that as an open window because people you know you have to put it in the psychology of human beings if people are required to do something differently then they can now pick from all the different things they can do it's different than if they're just doing the same thing and now they'll tend to stick with what's more comfortable that's not everybody and that's not every time we're talking about tendencies people will stay with something that they're comfortable with if the thing they're comfortable with is in and of itself changing that is an opportunity to maybe get their attention and say why don't you come over here so look for moves by other, other platforms that have smart contracts and they're going to try and scalp some of those people off of any negativity that comes out of this launch well maybe coin telegraph should start watching the crypto tonight channel just to get the information correct and verified before publishing their articles they, they should just hire roland and, and as an editor Oh, God, imagine that. <laughs> Nigeria is establishing a framework for wide scale crypto adoption. You haven't you never seen nothing like this. Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, has become a bastion for crypto adoption. Uh, <laughs> crypto scams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> uh, they have a they have a secure uh, uh, they have their own securities and exchange commission the nigerian sec based in abjuba i'm sure a very upright <laughs> regulatory body and they will be overseeing uh, the introduction of uh cryptocurrency Apollo. into their general financial system would, would they fall under the umbrella would apollo fall under that umbrella with the gsx coin 
you think? They uh, must. They have to. <clears throat> I would expect so. I, I know that they've done a lot to, to with, with Africa, you know, to operate in Africa. The, the new uh, what have you is, is based out of Africa. And that's, uh, you know, so I don't know if they fall under it or if they'll be working with it. Uh, this would give them, according to this, if I understand GSX correctly, this would give them the legal ability to legally offer that in Nigeria. So that's an interesting thing because I don't know what the other jurisdictions, you know, if they'd be offering this, if there would be liabilities, or if the country hasn't agreed to allow it, would they be able to? Even though they're saying Africa-based, they have to have the consent of, of the governments. So Nigeria is now saying these are the guidelines that you'd be able to operate under. And if you grease a palm or two, I'm sure that they're flexible on those guidelines as well. <laughs> Oh dear, what do you do? Uh, what do you do? <laughs> Again, though, this is, you know, it's a double edged sword. It's increased regulation. However, it's also increasing the legal marketplace, making it bigger, allowing more people into it. There's plenty of people who will hold on to their dollars until it's legally okay. They don't want any gray areas, and that's just how they are. And this says, well, if you were one of those people, you're sitting on the fence, we're going to provide a framework for you whereby you can believe your money is quote-unquote safe, and you can now buy into this asset. I don't get it. Maybe my favor's kicking in, but I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. What don't you get? What, the article. I don't know. I'm a bit headspaced. <laughs> well, they're they're, they're going to they're going to allow people to to use cryptocurrencies legally in Nigeria as opposed to oh, illegally. this is still a Nigeria topic. Oh, well, okay. I thought you moved on from like oh, that's why I didn't get it. Okay, right. I thought you moved on from Nigeria topic. No, no, that was all <sighs> that was all one topic. There, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a start, I suppose, for them. And again, I'm curious if Apollo is going to fall underneath that umbrella. I don't think I've heard anything with regards to Nigeria coming from Apollo in terms of GSX, but that might be something I could look into and get back to the show with next week, maybe. Well, I'll uh, tell you what, if nothing else, it's another place that Ripple can move to. And uh, one of the things we discussed in previous weeks when we're, when we're talking about regulation, the lack thereof, the uncertainty, the, the lack of clarity, everything else is that some smaller nations, the Bahamas we discussed, di with different types of economies than the larger nations, they're seeing this as an opportunity to say, okay, well, what if we put a clear jurisdictional basis in place in our country and create an attractant for people that might be, you know, looking to do business but can't do it elsewhere? And Nigeria is not the first, it won't be the last. I just got a transmission from our program engineer, Roland, and he, he said to me, did you hear about the guy who died from Viagra? No, they couldn't close his casket. Bing, bing. Da, 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 da. You're getting except, better, Roland? Except if it was Roland that died from Viagra, then they'd still be able to close the casket. <laughs> Okay, Google Trend shows Bitcoin searches at 2020 high as Bitcoin tops 19.4K. Now, I think, again, better metric for a lot of people inside the industry than the price uh, or even in a market cap or anything else is the interest. And people looking and, and saying, what is this thing, means potential new users, potential new, new buyers, potential new investors. Uh, I know a lot of us have been waiting for that interest to peak up again and for people to be looking at it again. We don't, uh, okay, you, you wake up in the morning, you look at the price, you say, okay, whatever. If nobody's talking about it again, nothing's changed. Uh, here is an indication that the interest level is starting to pick up behind the, those price increases that we've seen over the last two weeks. The hype is real, bro. The FOMO is real. And as we kept saying earlier this year, before the Bitcoin halving even started to happen, a lot of people in the lead up to the halving <coughs> were expecting these huge pumps in price because it's halving overnight. And we kept saying it's going to be a good six months towards the end of the year before we see any significant changes in the price. Just as the last Bitcoin halving four years ago, just as the next Bitcoin halving in three and a half years from now. So 
this is it. What we've been saying from before the halving even occurred is happening right now. The price is pumping. The bull market is here. There's more interest. There's FOMO. And we said it towards the end of the year, November, December. What are we at now? End of November. So, yeah, it's it's all... all the, every, everything's falling into alignment now. Mm. And do next year is going to be a crazy year. Mm. Oh. He says in 2020... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next year is going to be oh, as opposed to this year, which is what? Well, this year was quite uneventful up until about two weeks ago. You're talking, yeah, strictly in cryptocurrency, huh? Crypto, okay. Crypto. Yeah, you're it's not talking strictly. like in you know real life because I wouldn't call anything that's happened this year normal. No, no, no. I'm talking about crypto. So yeah. it's very boring, yeah, in crypto up until a couple of weeks ago. Now the hype is there. The FOMO is real. Like institutional investors. Now what? Besides well, there, the, there's something to pray for. Maybe it's an inverse proportion. Real life cryptocurrency, and all and one can be really weird or the other, right? So maybe then, if it, we have a really boring year next year in real life, we'll have a really exciting year in cryptocurrency. So that's what everybody's got maybe. to pray for. Pray for, and I think we could all use a real boring year next year. And with just news item after news item, price increase after price increase in the crypto world. We want to be have so much to report on that we can't even we're coming up to an hour and we're like, we hardly even went anywhere. That that that's what we would like. But besides the institutional investors that have come on board this year and have come on board pretty hard, what makes this bull run different from the last one? is this time we've got PayPal supporting us. We've got PayPal backing us up. We've got the big guns behind us. Yeah. That didn't exist in the last bull run. Yeah. That did not exist. Yep. So you wait until this FOMO and this hype reaches mainstream, global mainstream news media, yeah. and all these people with PayPal accounts that now have access to buy Bitcoin. Oh, it's more than e that. It's more than that. They just announced they're going to let people use it. Yeah. You, you, you'll exactly. be able to link your balance to PayPal. And PayPal gives you a card. Uh, and you, you'll be able to spend your Bitcoin balance with your PayPal card wherever you it's are. It's going to be insane, yeah. dude. That's big it's fucking gonna, And And that, that shit wasn't in existence in the last bull run. And mm -hmm. the last bull run, we saw daily pumps of $1,000 a day on average, $1,000 a day for Bitcoin without PayPal. Yeah. With that, there's over 300 million. Oh, forget about without PayPal. It, it, it last bull run, it, pick at any time, any person in the industry and say the words PayPal to them, they would have had nothing nice to say. Not a damn thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it appears as if Amazon is now looking hard into Bitcoin as well, from what I'm hearing. Hmm. So, well, that's a big, times. That's a big name, too. I, we'll see what comes down the pike. But, uh, you know, it's certainly what we don't see is where we were at uh, about a year or so ago. I forget when when Overstock pulled out uh, and then a couple of others stopped accepting Bitcoin. You know, the fees had simply gone out of control and, uh, you know, they, they, it wasn't feasible for them anymore. And we were seeing pullbacks. It, it does seem to be the opposite now, where now the announcements are going the other way. And we have platforms like PayPal that for the longest time didn't see, you know, if you said to somebody in 2017, PayPal will be taking Bitcoin, they would have laughed rightfully right in your face now, that company will never and now look so things have the ability to change and, and and right now they seem like they're changing for the better totally different landscape compared to a year ago yep, totally absolutely. different and that was a year ago till now what about from now until a year into the future this time next year what's going to happen mm -hmm. what will happen between now and 12 months time crazy man I'm excited. Well, I don't know, but we'll be here reporting on it. Yeah. yeah. We'll be here all old and gray by then. Have long beards, walking sticks and shit. Yeah. And we'll be smashed celebrating. And we'll be saying, remember that episode 12 months ago? Well, yeah, now Bitcoin is $2,000. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. But that, as as a, that could always cut bad. The optimist in me has to say no. I look for those chances, those forks 
to, to, you know, forks in the road that we have. You have to believe that they're going to fork off positively, even if you prepare yourself, which you should, for them to fork negatively. And if you're prepared for those negative eventualities, but you're looking towards the positive ones, you put yourself in the best position to accept what life has to offer. Because many times life will offer things to people and they don't accept it because they're not looking for it. And they're looking only in a negative cast. And people do that to protect themselves fundamentally, but you need to draw a line. There's nothing wrong with being an optimist as long as you're also taking whatever safeguards you need to. Yeah, being um, a realist at the same time. Optimist yep. and a realist. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and having said that, the difference between like and love is spit and swallow. Oh. That's going to do it for us. Nice to have you back, Darko. You know, Sean is a lot more refined than you. Uh, so we didn't have any of that vulgarity last week. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. Like, I was literally itching to come back yeah. to the show. Itching to come back to the stream, bro. Yeah. Compared to our usual Absolutely. show, compared to our usual show, that was like a fucking debate over tea at Oxford University. I mean, it's a, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we'll be back with more obscenities and educational content next Wednesday, 9 p.m. EST time. Yes, we will. Uh, and we are flat out of time this week, however. Guys, gals, cats, dogs, uh, everybody, it's been nice to see you again. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again next week when we will have more news, hopefully good news. And uh, that's it, folks. Uh well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual.